This is from Boaty McBoatface. It is a Yamaha uh, Speedo slash fuel gauge slash possible other functions. I'm not entirely sure. They suffer from a condition where the screen bleeds into itself. Yeah, I see the black coming up at the bottom of the LCD there. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure there may be a fix for that. I really don't know. But uh, what I did is just went and ordered a replacement LCD. Comes in this cute little tin. And wrapped up in a static bag. So today we're going to fit this and hopefully it's the right one because there is a couple of models of that gauge and this one is model number 6Y583570A000. We'll see if we can make it light up before we rip it apart. Black is ground and red is plus 12 according to this. That's not drawing any current and yellow to power source yellow to power source i guess yellow is like accessory like you have on your automotive ah uh, yep it is lighting up but it's very faint and horrible you can kind of see some stuff above the 88 at the bottom and some stuff down the side is kind of trying to flicker we will put a new screen on and see hopefully that resolves our problem I guess things won't happen if all of the, the liquid crystals bled down to the bottom. <laughs> um, strange effect. So the way that this is put together is uh, they've heat staked over the ends there. There's that little little bump in there. Bit hard to see black on black. Um, but yeah, four of those all the way around. And uh, just heat staked over there. So we need to remove that heat stake. Um, if we can do it in a way that preserves it, uh, that'd be cool. Um, if not, I guess these things just normally glue back together. We also need to tend to the fact that uh, when the person removing it did so, he snapped off the little vacuum line to a sensor on the back. And I don't think the front unclips. It doesn't feel like it moves. The front ring, so... Let's start with those heat stakes and see what happens. I see there's a rubber gasket all the way around. So this section comes off from this section. People normally just cut them off. I wonder if I heat it up, if it would relax the plastic enough to slip off under its own tension. And then we could melt them back down and reuse them. But uh, let's let's try that. I don't know what type of plastic this is. I don't see any markings. We could do a test, maybe to see if it's AB, ABS. Get a little bit of acetone. Get a little bit of acetone. On the end of my screwdriver. And we will put it on the plastic and see if it melts. And it does, almost immediately. Okay. So, quite likely ABS or maybe some kind of styrene. You've got to be careful with acetone around plastic. It'll really ruin your day. If it got, gets onto clear plastic, it's not going to be clear for much longer. So, I will try for 180 degrees at 50% airflow with a small nozzle. Now I don't see a lot of compression in that gasket as it sits, just giving it a squeeze. Need to secure this something and I don't have any much bigger to secure it in, so just get a, a spudger under there so I can give it a bit of a twist. And then sort of twist it apart as it warms up. But I think that might do the job Let's see if I can mount it more sturdy and get you a better angle. How's that looking? It's probably the best I can do for now. We can slip back under the edge there. Oh, 
It is melting. But I think I'm fighting the other ones, so we may just have to work around, work our way around. Maybe I need to get it a little hotter. Oh no, here we go. So that one's lifting off. Just let it lift it up and then let it cool down. So that it doesn't try and reform. What I want to do is pull the hole over the, the uh, stud. So that the hole reshapes the stud as it comes off over it. And um, and sort of just brings the brings the plastic back up into a, a stem. Like that. So how well that showed up, but you could see the melted edge folding up around the stem as it went through the hole trying to focus on it here we are that's a bit better you can see how that's folded up as the hole came up around it and that's what I'm trying to achieve on these ones so I'll carry on around as we get more wiggle room And just letting it cool off so that it holds that shape when, I, when you release it. Try not to, of course, get the body of it hot, so hot that it melts the flange. It won't seat on the rubber gasket. Okay, that one's kind of come off completely. Because it hardens inside the hole, it's the right diameter to go back through it when we put it back together. It feels like something's holding it internally anyway. It feels like it could possibly push in around here. And tuck back in because it is it is tapered so it does it does come out like this so this must um, push up inside and then lock over the rim Pushing that edge all the way back in, tucking it in. There we go. Probably have to do the same for this one as well. Let me do that and reposition. With these bungs pushed down into the hole, this back piece, I think, will just pop off around it. There you go. Click it off the last stud. What's next of it? Uh, yep. the rubber seal behind. There we go. What else is stuck on there? There is a plug down to the motherboard so we will have to unplug that. There we go. So we have a couple of wires coming up here to the back. So if we unhook that one, it's just a little press fit connector no locking mechanism on that connector this is our little vacuum or pressure sensor uh, that is broken so we'll have a look at that later we'll get the LCD done there's no point ordering one of those if the LCD is not fixable. So if we make a note with the connectors at the bottom, we'll, we'll 
slip off the gasket and, and um, keep it in that orientation. So connectors at the bottom, gasket goes back on. That will make sure, I guess, that it seats in the same in the same exact position as before to ensure a good seal. Well, this one looks permanent. This one's plugged in. I'll unplug that one. Again, just a press-in press, press -in connector. There's no locking tab. Uh, try not to get the dip switches altered. I don't know what they do. We have heat stakes on the PCB. Look at those things. Two there. Two there. What a horrible way to make something. Certainly not serviceable. I have to try my trick again down there. So as far as I can tell, the uh, the black stakes hold the this board and the lower board with the screen on it uh, to the body, and the white stakes are coming through from the LCD just to keep the front panel board uh, secured to the backboard. So we don't want to melt the white ones yet. I I don't know um, what. If I can replace the LCD without melting them, but I'll leave them on. Uh, we'll focus on trying to pull pull the board off over these ones. Now we might have to do this side a bit, then the other side a bit, and just work back and forwards until it um, can can pry up high enough. That's only shifting a little bit. I wonder if the front, if the LCD panel is um, somewhat adhered to the front at all. It might make lifting up on it a bit trickier, but... Well, with much persuasion, it looks like I have made it break free. And I think I know the problem was uh, the... If I had to make a, a decent guess, there's rubber uh, around the corners, and we'll probably see it when we pull it out. But I just had to get in with something a bit stronger than my flimsy little uh, <laughs> flimsy little screwdriver, because I think it was flexing where I entered the handle, and I wasn't getting much leverage on it. So come in with something a bit stronger, and um, yank up on it, and um, yeah, she's popped free. So now, in theory, this should wiggle out with everything and attached but there is another cable you see that red and blue one running down under there and we have to unplug that so it's going to come up this way and what do you know yes look look at that large rubber surround that's what was sticking to the case and giving it too much grip is that can only go on one way Cool, it's got a notch cut out that side for up around here. Looks like the backlight, so that's fine. And there's a, down the bottom there, there's a, a plug, which is for, oh, the button's on the front panel, okay. Right, so we'll just unplug that. And again, it's just a friction fit. There's no um, release tab on there, so just give it a pull. And there's our prize, one destroyed LCD. The only way to get it off is to release these uh, other tabs so and now we need to bend these black metal tabs that are holding the frame on to get the LCD out you can see if you look at it what way they've bent them initially so this is bent uh, anti-clockwise so we want to unbend it clockwise you don't want to twist it right around look quite solid Now if you've done everything right, this should just pop off. There we go. And 
and the panel just has one zebra connector along one edge there hopefully it comes off relatively sticky free looks like it might be kind of like a plaster Ah, there is a screen protector on there. It's coming off with the tape. Good stuff. Grab the zebra strip and hope that that's going to make a good connection. Pull that one off and stick it on there. Uh, it's only going to line up in one spot uh, effectively. Might just sit it in there. That's going to kind of centralize it in the frame got it sitting all the way in against the plastic and we'll pop the screen on like that is in the wrong place so we want it to sit there I'm trying to get it to sit between the two side posts you can feel it sit down it's just going to have to hang there until I get the frame over it and and squeeze it down perfectly It's going to hold it pretty square. So applying a bit of squeeze it together pressure so that you can get the arm over the edge of the board and give it a twist and lock it back on and uh, repeat until all done. Where you doing along by the zebra connector um, just being careful squeezing it together it will compress the connector a little um, and just making sure that the edge of the uh, panel which you can kind of see sticking out there um, is within the bounds of these posts so that you're not squashing it against the post and fracturing the glass so now I think before we put it all together we stick some power on it and see if it looks better And right away, that's a thousand times better. Job done. If you had any missing segments, and granted, we probably can't test all of them, but I mean, that's looking pretty good. Let's turn it on again. Does it do a... Oh, there they are. They all light up. So if you were missing some segments, you'd want to make sure that Zebra connector was well seated. Um, you may want to wipe over the edge of the LCD uh, and the PCB with... Um, some alcohol just to make sure it's clean um, and another thing you could try is uh, if you still can't get it to to make good contact you could flip it 180 so that the zebra connector is sitting in a completely different position and that can also help um, connections to form uh, where the, the subtle differences in the shape of it um, uh, end up working a different way so it all connects back up so um, if also if it's not within a frame what you can do is move it left and right slightly just to get again a different position on the connector where it may not have compressed so much um, and if you can see for sure that all of the connections are well covered uh, by the strip I suppose what you could do is slice off um, a millimeter or two at the end and uh, allowing you to shift it if it was held perfectly within um, then yeah you might be able to do that if you're struggling before we get too carried away we are going to have to work out um, if 
we can fix the vacuum slash pressure sensor on the back panel. Make sure there's no marks on there before I permanently reseat it back in. Clean out the case as well. Yeah, we're going to have to try and fix that. You could get away with gluing. Sorry. <laughs> If you put it up that way and put the lid down onto it, you can avoid the, oh, you can avoid the rubber gasket falling off. Um, although it does seem to be sitting on there pretty well. All right, here we go. Give it a wiggle, which finds its spot. Maybe just make sure those wires aren't bunching up on that plug. And keep pushing. It's just that rubber, rubber thing. I think is getting in the way a lot. May need to lean on it a little bit. There it goes. Probably should have found a way to align them better. I wonder if I could trick it into softening enough to pop back through the hole. So close. There it goes. There we go. We'll get it soft again and squish it down. Hold it till it hardens. There we go. Squashed it over. To hold the board down again. Like the center of the stake doesn't really melt a lot. It would actually be good to hold the board down too while it cools just to keep under pressure. I'm just going to get it there and in a rush push the board down and squish. squish. It's certainly not going to go anywhere. It can't lift the board at all. It looks kind of rough in the brake, like it might actually be reinforced with something. Some kind of plastic reinforced with something. Um, I really don't know if super glue is going to hold that. I'll try super glue and then uh, we'll, yeah, we'll super glue it and then we'll pack around it with something else just to make sure it's solid. Ooh. Uh, we'll just put a little bit on thinly. On there and on here. Because it's quite a thin glue, it's obviously not going to go in and block up the hole too much. And it's broken fairly, I wouldn't say cleanly, but with a definite edge. So it can kind of key back into itself. I suppose if it's not too perfect, at least this will align it. And then we'll pack some other stuff around the outside, which is going to um, seal it off. <laughs> um, if you're unsure if it's ready to let go yet, you want to try and let go in the direction of holding it against it because if you're holding it tight and then you try and pull off and you come back it'll rip it or if you if you just try and open your fingers it could um, stick to one or the other and pull it sideways but if you get it till it's freely moving pushing it in toward itself um, and then slowly release your grip as you go there's a that might help you out trying to do things like that Well, I've piled a little bit of glue around there and uh, let that harden and that should uh, be enough, I think. Get this thing reassembled, shall we?
just got to get these rubber bungs back through, which hopefully will just pull up into place because they are tapered. Pretty much. Go around and make sure the lip has come up over the hole and is seated. Looks pretty good. I have the original mounting bracket which I am going to use to sandwich this thing back together temporarily. That'll work. So if I screw these down uh, it's going to uh, pull the rear housing against the front housing uh, and compress the gasket a little so that we get a good seal when I restake the uh, mounting points. We'll snug them down, won't really crank on it, doesn't need much I would imagine. Now if I just squeeze it, can we get much more movement out of it? No, no, I think it's pretty well down. That's looking good I think, we'll just go with that. The glue has set well around here. That might do it. Let's release the pressure on the clamp and see if it pops off the stakes. <laughs> How's it looking? Give it a bit of a pull. It looks fairly well seated on the gasket. There's no excessive movement under the stakes, so they're nice and fully down. Primo! Then you have one working gauge and even a backlight. There we go. Awesome. Thanks for watching and uh, hopefully that helps you repair one like that. There are a couple of different gauges in this series of gauge. Um, they probably all come apart in a similar way so so that should help you figure out how to get into your one. Um, and then you just have to find a supplier of these. I found this on AliExpress. Just put in the model number of the gauge and away you go. So thanks for watching and catch you all in the next one.